welcome to our family enrichment program where we're going to be looking at resilience and building resilience in our young people at home and at school. So first of all, we're going to start off with a riddle to get us into the swing of things. A riddle is I am key to overcoming obstacles, yet I'm not always easy to find. In the face of trials, I am more than enough. What am I? And of course, the answer I hope that you have reached is resilience. So let's get started. We are tonight looking at how to level up resilience in our young people, we, where we will cover the following aims. Identifying key components of resilience, describing strat strategies for building resilience in school and outside of school, and develop a personal resilience plan that includes actions to navigate challenges. So are you ready? What exactly does resilience mean? Resilience means the ab ability to bounce back from difficult situations and staying strong in the face of adversity. Now, you might be wondering why we are using some lovely Mario themed uh, slides in our PowerPoint. And that would be because we could link resilience to playing of video games. One example is how certain video games provide an environment for players to face challenges, overcome obstacles and learn from failures. There is not one child that plays these video games that whenever they want to get to the next level or they want to try and complete the game and they maybe don't make it that time, that they don't just get back on and keep going and keep going until they get to where they want to be. And we hope that we can, or we hope that they can take these unconscious resilient skills that they have learned through these video games and apply them to their everyday challenges. But sometimes they might need some help signposting where resilience building skills are. Next, we have a short video that is looking at resilience in our children. When we are more resilient, good things can happen. We are able to cope with difficult situations and make the most of opportunities. OK, that isn't to say we always get it right. No one is a superhero. But when our resilience is stronger, the difficult stuff doesn't get to us as much. We are far more likely to keep things in perspective, solve life's problems easier, keep focused on what really matters and even thrive. Challenges come along. Hey, that's life. What matters is how we deal with them and learn from them. Research has shown that being resilient isn't just doing one thing. It's about bouncing back with optimism, being flexible about how we see things, taking a little risk, but most importantly, doing something about it. Sometimes we think of resilience as just keeping strong and getting through. It's not. Well, the truth is that resilience is all of these and more. We just need to work out when to bounce back, when to be flexible, and when to just keep going. The most resilient approach of all is reaching out, asking for help, and recognising we need support. Sometimes we forget that one, and it's very important. We can all get more resilient. The main question is how to. There are skills that can be taught that we know work. If we can learn and practise them in the small, everyday situations, the type of things that poke you in the side will get you a little annoyed. If we practice using the skills for the small stuff, then two amazing things happen. One, we can deal with the small stuff so it doesn't build up. And two, we are better prepared to deal with the big stuff. That's valuable learning at any age. Okay, so a key thing to take away from this video is that if we take care of the small stuff, then we're going to be better equipped to look after the big stuff. But how can we better prepare ourselves for the big stuff? And that is hope we'd hope to cover tonight. But it's also worth mentioning how resilience and challenges look different for everyone. But hopefully we are able to provide opportunities for skill building and personal growth for all. So looking at the key components of resilience, we are going to cover some of these areas to help build resilience however this list is not all you could do there is lots and lots of things but we're going to just focus on these six tonight which is self-care goal setting positive mindset problem solving support systems and coping strategies encouraging strong support strategies for building resilience involves a combination of support education and positive environments plato a philosopher once said that it takes a village to raise a child and by doing these things, we're creating a resilience boosting environment, which allows for a safe and supportive space for our children and young people to express themselves and be independent. 
So before we start, I'd like you to pause and think about, um, and if you would like to share a self-care practice or activity that helps you manage your own stress and maintain a positive mindset. Whilst you're doing that, I would share that for me, spending time with family and friends, cooking and going to the gym are all things that I prioritise for my own self-care. Now, these are important and we talk about this to our pupils in school, how you are your own best resource. And if you're not doing these things to take care of yourself and your own well-being, then you're going to find it hard to overcome the small challenges that we face on a day to day, never mind the big ones. So self-care can improve can help our young people's resilience by providing them with the tools and healthy habits necessary to navigate any challenges. So four things that we have um, highlighted to encourage when we're taking care of ourselves includes stress reduction. Now this looks different for everybody. everybody. Some um, people thrive within some healthy stress and it helps them stay motivated and stick to deadlines whereas others require some more support during stressful situations but it's recognize you as your you yourself and your young person what works best for you next is establishing boundaries and that's again is something that i think as we get older we're able to deal with better but for young people where they are juggling schoolwork, homework, maybe a part-time job, seeing family members, seeing friends, being able to establish boundaries whereby they can plan out their week and say actually they can't maybe go out every night of the week, they're setting one time aside for is it training or a curricular club or are they going to use that night to devise. Next is healthy habits and routine. We all know the pain of the last night of the summer holidays trying to get to sleep and get back into routine but very quickly once we're back our bodies just adapt so well to having a good routine and we work better under stress, Uh, decision making skills are improved, having a healthy habit and routine helps to navigate any challenges that we see on a day to day. The link between physical well-being and mental resilience is huge and so having healthy habits built into our routine is something that will go a long way in helping to promote our resilience in young people. Next is goal setting and embracing failure as a learning opportunity as well. In fact, failing does actually stand for F is first, I is attempt, I and an L for learning. First attempt in learning is what FAIL should stand for. And goal setting can contribute to the improvement of a child's resilience by fostering a sense of purpose and accomplishments. Four, three things we're going to look at here is being able to set realistic expectations for your young person. And everybody, as we've mentioned, is different and have got different challenges, whether that be academic or it could be social or friendship but setting realistic expectations in order that they can be met to give that sense of purpose and accomplishment. Don't forget to celebrate the small successes along the way because all these small successes add up to the big and larger goals. We also want to recognise these because it gives a sense of purpose and belonging and these don't again have to have to be class tests or end of unit assessments it could be um, given a responsibility whether that be in class or at home for example helping a younger sibling with homework this can help give a sense of achievement once that this has been done but also feeling needed and feeling wanted because they have a purpose and a job there this brings us nicely into how we should be encouraging a positive mindset and encouraging a growth mindset, the belief that abilities can be de- developed through dedication and hard work. A positive mindset involves just approaching things with optimism, focusing on solutions and maintaining a hopeful outlook, again, whether that be in school or at home. This will help to increase adaptability and motivation, but also help emotional regulation. The impact on positive self-talk is huge and how we treat ourselves and being kind to ourselves will have a big effect. So teaching children to reframe negative thoughts and cultivate a more positive mindset will help in building resilience. Even the music we listen to can affect our mood as it has the power to evoke motion, emotions. So for example, listening to upbeat and energetic music can elevate your mood while some calming and soothing tunes can help reduce stress and anxiety. But 
on a similar note, angry and aggressive music can also heighten these things. So you can't go wrong with some Beyonce country music. Everybody faces adversity in their life and it's important that when we're having these conversations with our young person that we make this clear that this isn't just to get through school. We are teaching these lifelong skills, not just to get through school, but life and the world of work that is out there. And everybody faces adversity in life. We have got Dwayne Johnston here, who, before he became a successful actor and entrepreneur, Dwayne The Rock Johnston faced adversity in his early life as he went through a period of financial struggle. And as a young adult, he had an injury that ended his football career. But despite these challenges, he made way into a successful career in professional wrestling and into acting and he often shares on social media motivational messages and uses his platform to participate in programs that focus on youth empowerment and his main message is always being resilient getting up and going asking for help and never letting yourself being held back by failing at something Next, we're going to look at support systems. Having a strong support system is critical in building and maintaining resilience. Having a sense of security by having someone that you can approach and communicate to, as well as for emotional support. I would like to hope that every child within the school has got a safe adult that they could approach, whether that is a registration teacher or just a classroom teacher that you feel that you could talk to as well as the many different people within the school building who are willing to support, for example, guidance teachers and year heads and the mental health ambassadors. Knowing that they have someone to turn to fosters an emotional well-being and helps develop emotional resilience. Having a positive role model, whether that be again in school or at, or at home, um, but observing adults and how they handle adversity teaches valuable coping strategies that we'll look at in more detail. Encouragement and validation from these support networks helps to boost self-esteem and contribute to a positive sense of self and belonging. A strong support system creates a sense of belonging in community. Feeling connected to others helps provide a foundation of resilience by knowing they're not alone in facing difficulties. It also creates stability and consistency, having that reliable support person in place. But we all learn from others so by having a positive role model and showing resilient behavior at home will help to create a stable environment and that is essential for building resilience as it helps children to feel secure and better equipped to face uncertainties so i'd like you just to pause and reflect on a person or a support system that has been crucial in building your own resistance and maybe make this a topic of conversation for you and your young person how again we all face adversity at some point in our lives and a challenge and how did we get through that and sharing these stories with our young people can help make us one more approachable and to realize that we're not alone we can rely on each other to help each other out and lastly looking at coping strategies developing successful coping strategies will help our children to navigate and adapt challenges stressors and adversity now this is going to be different for everybody but everyone needs to be kind to themselves that positive self-talk is so important remembering back to how you're your own best resource and if you're not taking care of number one then it's going to make overcoming challenges much more difficult secondly and probably one of the biggest points to make here is asking for help the biggest one, this helps to build relationships and form a trust as well as solve problems faster. Let's reach out and use each other's experience to help our own and do it together. Then we've got effective time management. This is crucial and contributes to building resilience by reducing our stress, improving our productivity, again giving us a sense of control that of what we're doing, whether it be again at home or in school. Prioritising and goal setting as well through time management, identifying what tasks need to be done urgently, time blocking, so allow these times um, to be set aside to make sure that we can do that. And that also allow, uh, allows us to divide larger tasks into smaller, more manageable steps, using a planner or a calendar, but setting a realistic time frame. But again, like we've mentioned before, celebrate the small successes along the way. Physical activity is something that, again, with self-care, 
has a huge impact and these do all over, overlap. But physical activity, getting out and moving your body, whether that is in the gym or outside at a club, has a huge benefit to coping mechanisms and making ourselves feel ready for challenge. So we're going to look at the collaboration between school and home and how we can build resilience in both of these. It's worth mentioning though that working together to create a consistent and supportive environment is crucial and the sharing of information, strategies and successes is always encouraged and how we can do this together. So starting off by looking at in school, extracurricular activities is something that at Bishop Briggs Academy we have an extensive list of both before school, during lunchtime and break time. Now this, for some of us, the challenge could be attending one of these clubs where none of our friends are going um, and we need to walk into that room and start making new friends. It could be that we want to learn a new skill and we are going to join some of these clubs, but by going and stepping out our comfort zones but me meeting like-minded people um, can help improve our resilience and feeling of belonging. Having a strong support network with staff and pupils so making sure that our young people have the opportunities to meet new friends like at clubs within teamwork and classes but also have that network where they can approach a safe member of staff or a mental health ambassador or part of the core team that are here to help. Resilience education is also inbuilt into all our courses and we don't even realise on a day to day that we do these things all the time. This includes problem solving tasks in school. We make so many decisions every single day that we don't talk about it or signpost it as being resilience education. But our children, our young people are doing these things automatically and it's important that when they're having a hard time or if they've got a difficult decision to make that we remind them that they problem solve and use these thinking skills and cognitive development every single day. Celebration of achievements. Don't forget to sweat over the small stuff and celebrate it because all of these things add up and we have a system in the school where our young people um, tell us about their achievements through uh, Teams on Satchel, um, Teams or Satchel, and we pass on the celebration of these achievements. However, this can sometimes uh, be missed because not everybody is telling us all the good stuff um, and it doesn't have to be academic um, outside the school. If there's any challenges we're faced, it's also great to celebrate these too. Building resilience at home, again, if there's any extracurricular clubs or activities or work experience we can get, but a huge part of our time at home should focus on self-care and making sure that we are taking care of our one best resource that we have to ensure that we are able to give every challenge that we face our best. Establishing a routine, like we've mentioned, this is far easier during term time. However, um, our brains function better when we have got an established routine, even at weekends, if we can keep to a routine. And having a safe and supportive environment for our young people to feel like they could approach and have a conversation if they need to. And what I will say is if you are here this evening for this presentation or using this video resource, then you are already doing that by seeking out how to do these things. So the benefits long term for our children, let us remember that by nurturing resilience in our children, we're not just preparing them for the challenges today in school or at our clubs or in class tests, but we're also empowering them to become the resilient leaders of tomorrow, where they're able to be adaptable in the workplace and work effectively under stress. We also have great problem solving skills and interpersonal skills, but work with optimism and positivity for a good work-life balance and also continuous learning throughout. That then brings me on to creating a resilience plan that is suitable for your child. And what I would like to say is these things that we have mentioned tonight are already in place. We just perhaps don't signpost them. You do these, but often we need help to signpost them for our young people and for ourselves as a reminder. What I will say is to assess the strengths and challenges of your child. Everybody is different and that's to be celebrated. But to set tasks and goals that are suitable 
to your child is best for ensuring that we are helping to build a resilient young person that isn't going to be knocked down. Encourage a positive mindset and most of all reaching out for support, whether that is encouraging our young people to reach out for support, either from people at home or their support system in school, but also for ourselves, if it is for us or for our young people to reach out for support for. Next is encouraging flexibility. Now, we can plan and make all the plans that we like and things don't always go to plan. So knowing and accepting that being flexible is something that we will do and we can change our road and route to end up where we need to be and that's okay. Having regular check-ins just to see how everybody's doing and how different challenges everybody is going to face is going to affect them differently and to check in on how they're doing. So to conclude, by fostering a supportive environment, encouraging open communication and teaching valuable coping strategies, you are laying a strong foundation for your child's wellbeing. Don't forget to celebrate the small victories, acknowledge their strengths and continue to guide them with love and understanding. But your commitment to nurturing resilience is shaping resilient, confident and adaptable individuals already. Lastly, thank you so much for playing and joining us tonight. We hope that we have shared some um, strategies that will help you to recognise the resilience building skills that we already do as a school and family at home um, and our young people. I would like to mention a huge gratitude for your participation and commitment, um, but also could I encourage ongoing collaboration and communication between home and our school life as well. If at any time you um, would like to get in touch for more support, please do uh, contact the school and we will be sure to help. Please let us know if you have any questions and just get in touch. Thank you.